What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well today. First and foremost, what do we think of the drip? We finally got all decked out in our FXR gear and bike and I have to say, big big fan. Absolutely love it. So thank you very much 327 and the FXR guys for putting that all together. Very very happy to be uh, on this team. And I didn't know until today I got a, a tag on Instagram from the FXR kind of like gaming page which I didn't know existed. Um, but they're actually spread out across all games. It, uh, it goes across bikes, sim, uh, even goes across MESX and Legends, which bit, bit of an L, L games. <clears throat> but you know, it's cool to see them kind of branching out and going into the, the virtual space as well, not just in real life. So big W's all the round. And today, so the track we are playing is technically Unadilla again, the Kells track that he released. However, it does have this sand track off into the, uh, the distance, which obviously is not there in real life. It's uh, where the AMS track would be, IRL. And I hopped in a server with Charlie on this earlier today, not really expecting anything, but anyone hadn't played it until today. And I think it might actually be more enjoyable, to me at least, than the actual Unadilla track that's over there behind me. Um, this is... It's a very, very short track, bearing in mind. I think the best lap I've got around here at the moment is a 51-something, which I got in the race in. But it just flows really, really well. And I'm actually using it as a little bit of practice for the MXGP of Lommel today so hoping that will go as well uh, i've seen screenshots of long i saw jv's first person camera footage too and it looks pretty damn brutal if i'm being honest but i think long just one of them staple tracks that it has to be good it just has to be like every long that's existed in this game has been good as well the, the 2013 long in this game i feel like it's just one of them all of fame tracks one of the ogs the majority of people have definitely played at some point it was the home of so so many races back when i was learning this game like every fun series or like proper series would always have a race on it throughout the year the only downside is there was a, a couple of cuts on there like you could be very very sneaky with the edges of the track which was a bit of an L. but other than that like big w's all around it was really really good fun now, unfortunately, it's just me, myself and I right here, a little bit pressed for time, so I didn't want to go through all of the effort to kind of get a server set up and get everybody in here. What I will be doing in the future, though, is 100% next public lobby stream that we do. This track is getting put in here. I believe it has 40 gates, which is quite disgusting, you know, thinking about it, on such a, a small track. But it just flows so, so well, and I think that... I don't know how much time and effort Kells put specifically into this one compared to the main dealer track, but I do genuinely prefer riding around this, which is never something I, I thought I'd say, because I'm not the biggest of sand track enjoyers on this game in general. Uh, on the rare exception of like JV Sardinia, for example, uh, Learop also, the, the uh, not stock Learop, what am I saying, like the free Learop that's been in the game for a very long time, I was always a, a big fan of. And I'm sure, I'm hoping that Lommel's going to be just as fun. But what this track does very, very well, which I think is a must for all sand tracks, is, like, obviously it's rough and there's rollers all around the track, but it's built in a way where you can double your way through them and double your way around the track overall. Because I, I feel like to ride sand all correctly, I'm not sorry, I'm this, am I? No. To ride sand correctly, I feel like it should almost be a bit like Supercross, where you're just, like, going jump, 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 downside in one roller to another one, jumping inside to outside to carry as much momentum as possible. And maybe that's why I, I like really well-built soundtracks, possibly, because I do prefer my Supercross over my outdoors just in general. Uh, I've noticed that soundtracks that don't particularly have a great flow, I absolutely despise. And then soundtracks that you can ride them like Supercross tracks, I really enjoy it. Can I quad, can you quad this? I feel like you might be able to quad that if you get your front wheel up and over the little roller 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 before the jump should be all, all gucci should be all good uh, i feel like this track might almost end up being a bit of a hidden gem because i guarantee that majority of people that downloaded this unity of the track as a whole probably haven't even played this sand version yet it was only by chance that uh, charlie saw it up on one of the ace moto servers so we hopped in to have a little bit of a, a rip around and yeah i think we've accidentally stumbled onto a little bit of a gem here so kells more sand tracks please like massive massive w I'm not sure if you've got a project that you're already working on or you need some motivation, but yeah, custom like fantasy sand tracks seem to be your forte. It seems to be the way forwards. Like, I really, really do enjoy it. There's multiple line choices in every single corner, so it's not just like a bit of a goat track where you just have to follow the leader. It is built pretty damn well. The only thing that I really struggle with 
Oh, it's these two little doubles. So there's four little rollers here before the finish. And even on a 450, downsiding it as well as I possibly can, I can't get over it. So that's probably the only bit of criticism I'd give this track, is it would be nice if you could cleanly get over them, rather than having to struggle or bounce your way through. Because nobody likes just bouncing through uh, the sand rollers on any sand track. It feels like it takes away so much momentum. I will say that this track erodes very, very nicely. I've got it set to 1.8 for myself in here. Uh, I can't remember what it was set to earlier in the Ace Moto server, but there was a good 20 or so people racing, and over the course of a 5 minute plus 2 race, it got a little bit beat up, but not to the point where it caused all sorts of weird and wonky Poboso physics. You know, there was no really brutal front end knife in it was all quite straightforward and predictable so big w in that regards uh, i'm messing around with setups at the moment because i've been really really struggling with my front end on this 450 in especially on the tfc tracks and especially when they get deep the front end just likes either pushing over the rut or completely locking 90 degrees to the side in the rut so I'm messing around with some things. I've tried making the uh, the wheelbase as long as humanly possible, and I've also slapped on Skills's MX out uh, outdoor setup that he has in his own like public Discord. So if anyone can go and check that out. Uh, don't have the link off the top of my head, so feel free to uh, ask for it in my Discord or in the main MX bikes one. There's about 3,000 people in it, so it's not like it's a uh, a niche one to get into by any chance. But it, for someone like me who has very very little clue. What they're doing in terms of setups it definitely I, would, I wouldn't say it's like oh my god this setup is insane it's gained me three four seconds a lap it's more the predictability of knowing what the bike's going to do underneath me there's not as much guesswork as i've had on other setups um but it's just the geometry that i'm trying to tweak a little bit more and I'm messing about with my gearing as well gearing's a bit of a weird one for me i always find like the gap between second and third gear isn't like enough like second gear would be banging off a limiter third gear bulks a bit too much and let me know your opinions on this but I feel like this game is very opposite to real life when it comes to bogging the bike I feel like if you're in a super high gear trying to keep more traction I actually feel like sometimes you end up sliding more and the reason I think that is if you're let's say I'm going around a slow flat corner and I'm trying to keep traction so maybe I'm in third gear trying to half throttle it and bog it around I find that if my back end does step out at all whilst I'm doing that, it will rev like all the way up to the top of third gear. Whereas if I'm in first or second gear and I'm like higher RPMs, when it slides out then it, it only goes to the top of second. I feel like there isn't a certain like I mean, like in terms of the rear wheels rotations per minute rather than revs per minute, I feel like the rear wheel spins up a lot more when you're in a higher gear when it breaks traction rather than when you're in lower gear. So I'm experimenting. I'm messing about with it a little bit. I'm trying to make my gearing a little bit shorter overall. And I've not noticed too many downsides. I need to try and work out a new way to get out of the gate. That's 100% sure because we have officially become famous <laughs> in the rule books of well, the, the new rule book that got released for the 2023 AMA outdoor season. They have specifically stated no Linda launches allowed. And what defines Linda launch is spinning your back wheel on the start gate. Uh, I can see why. It's been done. I imagine that from a streaming perspective, even though this game is very, very broken from a third person perspective and streaming as a whole, it looks like you're humping the handlebars and staring up into space most of the time. Uh, even though it's broken, I imagine that having 30, 35 people on the gate all lighting up their back tyres before the gate drop couldn't, probably isn't the best view of the game in the world, probably isn't the most realistic. So I can see why it's been done. It's very disappointing for me because I remember, I think it was like round three or round four of Supercross, just sitting for an hour, just hour straight, doing start after start after start, trying to find something that would give me a bit of an advantage ahead of other people out of the gate. And then I finally found it in that and I can only use it for one round because people started complaining about it. Only mind, it is something that everyone can do. There's no special hidden key binds or settings that you need. You literally just have to accelerate at the right time to get the back wheel spinning. That's that's all you need to do. Um, so a bit of a disappointment there. Maybe I can try and like weasel a, a video out of it at some point. Maybe I can title it like how to get the whole shot every time in MX bike. Some along those lines. Something a little bit clickbaity for you. I'm sure that would do quite well. Uh, I've no idea what I'm going to title this one. But I do think Kells has genuinely accidentally made one of the best soundtracks in the game. Uh, I'm just absolutely f vibing around here. Just flowing around the track. 
It's a very good track to practice not only sand, but practice your standing up in corners. There's a lot of corners on this track where standing up will greatly benefit the momentum that you can carry. Um, it's something that I'm trying to implement into my riding more and more recently. I find the more I sit down, the more weird and wonderful Pivovo moments I get, and the bike physics just get all janky and twitchy, and like, I'll get halfway around the corner, sat down, and then the bike will try standing itself up again, and then flopping over again, and for some reason when you stand up, you, you don't really get that. I don't know if it's a suspension thing where the suspension compresses and maybe it tries hitting you up the arse when you sat down, that causes the rider to get unstable, um, but give it a go. Uh, if you want some training drills to try and get better, uh, on sand as well as not on sand, I would just say hop on this track and then just try and go an entire lap without sitting down at all. I mean, you can see my controller overlay on screen right now. All the time my right stick is clicked down like this or the green rider at the bottom right has disappeared. I'm sat down. Anytime he's there and the stick is red, I'm stood up. Funny that I crashed the second that I'm trying to preach about standing up in corners. That happens all the time. But 100% recommend it. I think this outdoor season it will be a very, very important tool to use, especially when the tracks get super deep and eroded. And the only other thing that I wish he'd fix is, uh, let's see if I can try and do it in this next left-hander, is if keep an eye, keep attention to my left boot as I go around here, that even though I'm stood up, when I hit the rough stuff, my leg comes out, which shouldn't be the case in my opinion. You never see someone stood up IRL with their leg out unless they've like dabbed a, a foot by mistake and they're trying to get back into uh, like back into balance. So it'd be nice to have an option, kind of like Sim does, where there's an option to like dab or not dab at all. Because I, I feel like every time that leg comes out, it unsettles the bike again, which could just, it could be an easy fix. I have no idea of all the ins and outs. I know what triggers it is when your suspension is compressing to a certain point and your bum is X amount of distance away from the seat, it thinks that you're about to sit down. So it automatically sticks its leg out for you. Even with, I think there's like an auto dab option in the sense it doesn't matter. It still does it. I've tried uh, for many hours trying to find ways around it. I think unless you run the stiffest suspension known to mankind, where it doesn't really compress at all for your bum to get near the seat, then I don't think anything's going to change it until we get a uh, yeah, game update. And then in terms of updates, I know that the OEM guys are currently working hard at the moment to try and put together an update pack for our current bikes. I hope that all of the work that I'm putting in on the Yamaha at the moment isn't going to go to waste with the new bikes. I hope it's still somewhat decent, which is kind of an opposite opinion to what I had at the start of the season, thinking, oh, everyone's on blue, I hate it now, but it seems the further we go on and the more people get bored of the Yamaha, I'm seeing lots of Cowies, I'm seeing lots of Kawasaki's, I'm even seeing a few Hondas in there as well, so people are experimenting and reaching out and trying to make the other bikes work for them. Um, yeah, I'm hoping that all of the practice that I've put in over the last week or so doesn't completely go to waste ahead of the racing. I've also seen screenshots of uh, Parla, TFC's Parla for the 2023 season, and I definitely had mixed opinions when I first saw it. Uh, I thought the track looked a little bit flat overall, and I thought we were going to get quite a, a roughed up version. Um, but then Stone Rider came in clutch with like a little video of him flying around the track in free camera, and it's actually a lot rougher than it originally looks in the pictures, so kind of um, put my worries to rest there. And I feel like there's not a whole lot of point in speculating now. We may as well just wait until the actual track's released and we can go from there. And then if, this, let's say, round one is, for some reason, absolutely terrible, I'm sure then they can take whatever criticisms and feedback is given and just improve the rest of the rounds. So there's there's no point getting all arms up in the air and frustrated about whatever we may get. I'm hopeful. I think it'll be good. Like, Stone Rider knows what he's doing. TFC has been around for a very, very long time. So... Again, I think most most track builders wouldn't be building tracks if it wasn't for him, so I think we are in good hands, and I definitely look forward to it. I think it's going to be a very, very stressful round one. It's I have no idea what the sign-up's going to be looking like, but it wouldn't surprise me if we have like 300, 400 sign-ups just in the 250 class alone. I think it's going to be absolutely insane, uh, more so in NA than EU. I think the NA boys go absolutely crazy for their for their motocross. Um, but I'm excited for it. Should be nice. I'm, I'm quite confident I can qualify. I'm just not sure what the final result's going to be like. I want to set my goal just to get out of round one in the top five in points. That that would be nice for me. That's that's my goal. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please do drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'd greatly appreciate it. And I hope you guys have a lovely rest of the day, whatever you're up to. I uh, will catch you in the next video. Peace.